Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll talk about a hard cap, a max supply on Ethereum, and we'll talk about what goes on with Cardano. So let's jump right into the market. Um, if we look at the market and the prices today, we see a some bit of retracement here. So the numbers are slightly going down, except one coin, which is Cardano. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, I think generally this price range, while a lot of people have called it uh, the next bull run and that the bulls are coming and all of these things, I don't think we are out of the uh, red yet. I think any number between seven and eight and a half thousand is still a bit risky and i think we need to see some kind of confirmation here before really going back up as you know this jump right here for the podcast listeners i'm uh, referring to this mega jump or small mega jump that went from six and a half thousand to almost uh, seven and a half seven eight thousand um, in the last week and um, before this is cleaned up and before we kind of find out what happened here, I don't think um, this is a, a good uh, zone to actually buy in. However, once we've crossed that line, I think around eight and a half thousand or eight thousand six hundred, um, I think the, the numbers will go up again. So keep that in mind when investing. Now, what is up with Cardano? It's very simple. Um, as always, I, I, when I mention uh, coins jumping, the first instance that I look to also when doing uh, a lot of research regarding community and all of these things is actually to look at the subreddit of this specific coin. So we see here Cardano, this is the subreddit, it's slash r slash um, Cardano. And what we can see here is actually um, that Cardano has been listed on, Hu on Huobi and Huobi is Chinese is China's largest exchange. So it is kind of to be expected that in the co next couple of days, we'll still see some green numbers from Cardano because always when you uh, list a cryptocurrency on kind of a big exchange, people get excited, buy it up because uh, the idea is that more distribution means more volume, means more people actually entering the markets. So people are buying up the coins in the hopes that more people will buy up, price will go up and then they can sell again. Uh, nonetheless, I think the market in general quite okay for now nothing uh too weird um nothing too special as i've said between seven and eight and a half thousand i would still st stay in that kind of uh, wait and see mode and only after eight and a half thousand i would still uh, i would look into buying up uh, different positions now let's get into this um main story of the day and we're talking about uh, Vitalik's serious joke the case of ending ethereum inflation so at the beginning of april at uh, april a april fools um Vitalik Buterin actually um released a tweet i think it was or a statement um saying that he actually is thinking about um putting a limit on the total number of ether now, as you know, currently Ether doesn't have a limit at all. And by uh, definition and by technology, you can print as many Ether as the system requires. Um, this has both good and bad sides. Um, good sides, uh, or, or rather bad sides, is that potentially there is this risk of um, inflation. So the more Ethereum gets printed, if you will, um, that the, the, the lower the value of the Ether coin or the Ether token really is. And that being said, you have to keep in mind Ethereum and Ether hasn't been programmed or created to be actually a financial product. So we are always, as investors, we're coming from the perspective that Ethereum has to work in the same way as Bitcoin, has to work value-wise at least from, from the same way, but it's that's actually not the case. The case for Ethereum is that it's a programmable um, network or programmable computer um, that a lot of people can use to build different applications on maybe even built currencies on, but still that doesn't mean that uh, Ethereum has been created as kind of a financial product. So keep this in mind when you're um, thinking it from that perspective. Now, from a technical standpoint, it says here, the, the change would be easy to implement and pending sufficient community support, it could be executed with a simple code fix as part of Ethereum's next system-wide software update. Now, here are currently two sides. So on one side, we have Vitalik, who, are, uh, who is kind of arguing for uh, putting a limit on Ethereum. That doesn't mean that he's 
fully on board yet and that also doesn't mean that he will be the one doing the change it only means that he is like kind of open for this discussion so there has been some um uh, different perspectives going on from both sides and it says here for one critic side ether's role for the platform security and our warning that the introduction of a cap would make the cryptocurrency a pure speculative investment play something that many developers worry will make updating the protocol more challenging others take offense with what they claim is a poorly timed if not poorly researched issue now there, there are a bunch of uh, perspectives here. On one side, you have people arguing from a kind of economic perspective, like, uh, for example, Vlad Zamfir. He's also uh, the leading developer behind uh, Ethereum. He's saying um, the post has degraded into a bunch of people arguing. Oh, no, that was actually uh, Nick Johnson. Excuse me. Uh, Vlad Zamfir was actually saying, I don't think that we have the understanding required to actually meaningfully know what we would be consenting to. The numbers seem completely arbitrary. And uh, Nick Johnson then tweeted, the post has degraded into a bunch of people arguing pseudo economics with each other as if Ethereum were designed first and foremost to be an economy and not a computing system. And that's exactly the point. So Ethereum has been developed. The idea, the, the philosophy um, behind Ethereum is that it's a computing system and not actually um, a financial product, if you will. And uh, there are actually a bunch of um, a bunch of different uh, arguments against uh, putting a limit on on Ethereum. It says here, Ether has a primary intrinsic purpose on the Ethereum protocol that is to be consumed as a resource resource with which to run calculations upon a computational machine. An independent Ethereum developer, Daryl Morris, wrote in a blog post, according to Morris, Ether's use as an investment tool shouldn't be prioritized over its ability to secure and protect the network at uh, the protocol, something he thinks the proposal would do. Uh, because such a limit would theoretically cause the value of Ether to rise, transactions that burn small amounts of Ether would be disincentivized. Now, currently, in order to actually uh, kind of uh, get a transaction through, you have to use some amount of Ether, and that Ether is kind of going to um, the, the, the miners, for example. So this could be kind of uh, disincentivizing is what Johnson is saying. And this is exactly the point. So if you have the idea that a transaction or verifying a transaction is actually not as valuable, you would only go for the really big transactions where you can earn a lot of Ether um, to, to verify them or, or, or similar. So um, I, I kind of get the point. I think it's important that this discussion is going on. I absolutely see their point. And I think um, right now, Ethereum has different problems, and I would say the max limit is not one of them. Um, we also have here uh, some statements from Vlad Zamfir. He's saying, uh, holders and miners have obvious major conflicts of interest, which makes it impossible to count on them to care about any notion of public good or even any kind of impartial truth about optimal parameters. And um, then a Reddit user wrote, because obviously this, this issue and, and kind of these arguments come uh, around and, and some blog posts have been published. It says, great if you want to maximize your personal wealth, but uh, if you want to create a decentralized economy, it's not that good. So um, yeah, that's absolutely the point. I mean, Ethereum has been kind of, or actually the market has been kind of pressuring different coins into uh, putting a hard limit on the, the, the coins because um, everyone is speculating on the price and everyone is kind of taking the price as a measure or actually the, the, the market capitalization. And I think that's not the right way to go about things. I mean, obviously we are talking about the market capitalization and coin market cap as for almost all of you and, and me as well, it's always the first website we check out to see where we are standing in terms of portfolio and all of these things. That being said, in Ethereum's case, Ethereum has kind of a special place. And if you're investing into Ethereum, you have to also kind of take this into account. Now, uh, Vitalik Buterin obviously has some arguments in favor of it. I mean, he's discussing it. He says, Buterin stressed that transaction fees are not proportional to the price of Ether, but rather reflect demand for the Ethereum platform. This means that irrespective of a price rise, if the numbers of transactions remain the same, fees on the platform would not increase. 
Um, while the inflation rate on Ethereum is currently quite low, Buterin contended that even a small rates of inflation are a huge deal in the context of financial market returns. With an unlimited supply, Buterin warned that Ether could even be surpassed in market capitalization by one of the ERC20 tokens that have been launched on top of Ethereum. As tokens can be programmed without infl inflation, Buterin explained basically every ERC20 token becomes a better store of value than ETH. Uh, if we have a cryptocurrency which is inflationary, then that could lead to its value dropping, which by itself leads to less capital securing the network. So, I mean, he has some points. I think uh, it's, it's important that we're discussing this. I think as an investor, right now, it shouldn't really matter. I think um, down the road, this will definitely matter. Right now, I think Ethereum's, one of Ethereum's problems is definitely scalability and kind of network effects. So as soon as these two are kind of fixed and going into the right direction, I think um, putting a hard limit or cap could actually help make um, Ethereum a better store of value. I definitely see this. Um, however, we are always running into the risk or we uh, saying uh, just the Ethereum community or, or people who are promoting Ethereum or talking about it. Um, with these discussions, you're all, always running into the problem that you will lose some developers because they feel like the, the basic philosophy or the basic ideas be behind the project has not been met anymore since um, let's say a major decision has been made. We've seen this with the split between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. There has also been kind of a, a philosophical, ideological decision being made and people just were against it. So we, you always run into the risk of splitting the community with major decisions like these. So for now, I would actually uh, kind of rest uh, or lay this um, topic to rest and actually focus on uh, Casper, Plasma, all of these like scalability um, solutions that Ethereum is working on. And only after that, when we see kind of how it works and how it's performing, then I would actually uh, bring up this discussion again. So this is it for today, guys. Um, quite an interesting story. I think you have to kind of um, build your own opinion on these topics. Um, you can also say, look, from, from an investor perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you can print, in quotes, um, unlimited tokens. So you're only investing into hard cap tokens. That, that's a possibility and tokens with a certain limit. That's one investment strategy. Just keep this in mind when you're investing that um, there is an option also for, for coins like Ethereum to kind of put a max uh, limit of, of tokens being issued. So um, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, and um, also join uh, join us in the Telegram channel. I'll actually share some stuff when I'm um, doing a special video or a special episode or when I can't do a video, I'll actually inform you in the channel. So make sure you're subscribed to the Telegram channel. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.